Yeah, EA made their college football game and they put it out and people went nuts. And I picked it up the day that it came out. I don't know if I played it the day it came out. I might have played it the day or so afterwards. I got it from my PlayStation 5, but I've been playing that. And I instantly wanted to st- jump in into Dynasty mode where I can be a coach and do what I want to do, whatever I want to do. Mm-hmm. My coach's name is Al Booty. The reason my coach is named Al Booty is because the competition is ass, right? So this, <laughs> this, is, this, is, why we, this is how we do this. Hello and welcome to level 111 of the Thoughts and Players podcast, the gaming podcast with both takes and no strings attached. I am Jeremy, here with my compadre, David. What up? How how is uh how are you being treated this evening? How is life going? Going pretty good. Uh just got back from a week and a half vacation from Vietnam. Very and nice. And I s- slept a lot today. I don't I don't know like at, at work I just could not stay awake. Well, is it I mean are you still in the phase of jet lag? How how Maybe. far like I it's been 5 days but like the first yeah. three were like really rough. Mm-hmm. Like, it's, Pretty much last night was the first night where things like went well. Okay. But just today, I don't know what it was. I just lost it. I'm, I'm probably going to be yawning a lot. Yeah. Yeah. <gasps> well, hey, so. it's, it's fair. Yeah. I mean, that's, that's, that's a long trip. It, they're the, yeah, they're on the exact opposite schedule. Yeah. So hmm. it all went really. well, though. You, you partake, yeah. you partake in any, uh, any good cuisine there. Oh yeah, it was just everything was their kind of food. A lot of pho or pho, yeah, depending, I guess, and uh, a lot of everything else. Mm, there, yeah. you know, they had like uh, full pieces, like a full fish. You just had yeah. to dig into, you know, big, big shrimps and mm-hmm. uh, just a lot of stuff. Uh, my brother's wife's sister owns a tea slash smoothie shop there. So we went there quite a few times. Okay. And I found out I like coconut. I thought I always hated it. Yeah. But I got coconut smoothies and strawberry smoothies. Oh, my God. Mm. And everything is, like, well-priced there. Reasonable okay. pricing. Yeah. So we... What about the freshness of? Oh, sorry to cut off, cut you off, but oh, what about fine. the freshness of the ingredients? Was that oh, everything? That was everything's everything? fresh. Like there's, they don't. I didn't see any like quote unquote fake food there. Yeah. Anywhere in a store, in uh, my brother's wife's parents' house. That's where we stayed. Nothing. Everything was just like actual ingredients. Mm. But uh, we did try KFC just to see how it was compared okay. to ours okay. and it was a lot better yeah and we got one of the combos you know and it was a hundred and six thousand in in their currency but if you convert it it's four dollars wow for the whole kfc meal wow for a whole meal a whole wow. meal wow and like when we go somewhere else and you know like the smoothies for example they were like Forty five thousand, you know, so that's like two dollars. That's for a nice, nice smoothie as, bi- as yeah. big as my head. Yeah. You know, at least as that's... long as my head, maybe not as big as it, but that's nice. So, yeah, I, we were living the life over there. Sounds like it. And those interests, I didn't have a, a fortune. I, I, I remained in the States. I didn't go anywhere exotic. I went to Chicago for a little bit. Uh, in the, the interim of time, yeah, had some good food there. Uh, there's a, a barbecue place downtown Chicago called uh, Green Street Smoked Meats. Recommended. It's pricey, but man, it's a good, it's good barbecue. Um, but yeah, I mean, you mentioned KFC. I tried another place. I just want to talk about Adventures really quick. Uh, they opened up a Lee's Famous Chicken or Lee's Famous Recipe Chicken or something. Not oh yeah too, yeah we're yeah not too to far. Be? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah. Where the, you know, the bar where someone got murdered. That twice. is now <laughs> twice. That is now a fried chicken place. This is America. This is why you love America. This is why you come back. Um, I went there to see what it's like. Mm-hmm. It's KFC. People, I don't I don't know there's people out there that love that place that say it's better. It's KFC. It tastes like KFC. The sides taste like KFC. The biscuit tastes like KFC. 
I went, I did some history. I found out that the that the the person that's named after Lee was mm-hmm. the nephew of the colonel. It's KFC. It's okay. <laughs> Uh, but I mean, you know, it's slightly cheaper, I think, than KFC. So it has that going for it, but it's KFC. Um, wow. Unexpected. Yeah. Unexpected. But Hey, uh, I, it's good to hear about your trip to Vietnam being a success, getting to enjoy some good, fresh food. A lot of pho, you said. Yeah. Yeah. So I gotta, much. I gotta try that. I haven't, my yeah. partner's been wanting me to try pho for a long time and I haven't yet. So I gotta, it's a really good place. I'm going to throw it out there for everybody. It's just south of 13 Mile on John R. I can't okay. pronounce it. It's like Q Fong or something like that. But it's a Vietnamese restaurant. Okay. And I've had it once, like a couple years ago. Mm-hmm. And it is pretty good representation of what I was eating there the whole week. Okay. It's good to know. Yeah. Well, um... First of all, I mean, with, with putting a button on that little topic for one, congrats to the family, right? Mm-hmm. Um, Mazel Tov to you there. Ladies and gentlemen, chickens, ducks, and hens, you know, give your spirit and Mazel Tov to the people. We welcome into this pod. Uh, I swear we're going to talk about games, but we've had a little bit of eventually. adventures happen in the interim, so we just want to explore that. Um, but yeah, talking about, we're going to eventually get to games. How about we get to them now? And the first... Oh, oh okay. The first thing we explore, like always... Are the games we've been playing? Now it sounds like we've both been on a little bit of adventures in the interim, so I'm interested to hear about the games we've been playing. So I can go with what I've been going with what I've been playing, or if you have, I mean, I know you're still getting back into the swing of things, right? Mm-hmm. If you've played any games in the interim, you can go ahead. But what would you like? You want to offer yours I, first? Yeah, I'll go. Okay. Okay. So sleeping there was hard for me, so I get like maybe three or four. And being in a place I wasn't really that comfortable, I just lay in the bed until people started waking up. So I played a lot of TFT and a lot mm-hmm. of Royal Match. It, okay. I think I completed like 800 levels of Royal Match. Yeah, so it's 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 essentially Candy Crush. That's what everyone mm-hmm. calls it, you know. So I just played the crap out of that, and then TFT. I. That's all I did. But when I got back, I've been back for a couple days. Uh, yeah. I've been playing mostly Overwatch. I finally hit Diamond 4. Okay. So we're getting somewhere. I might. I think I might actually be learning something. I don't know. Okay. But uh, that's what I've been playing. Maybe, you know, it took a little bit of a, what do they call it? Um, kind of like a sabbatical, right? Mm-hmm. A cleanse, they may say. And you come back into it, and all of a sudden... Uh, you're, you're the the reflexes are firing off a little bit quicker and you're getting up there and you're climbing, right? Yeah. Maybe that's what happened. You know what I'm saying? Maybe. Or maybe in the interim of you being gone, that hater at Activision Blizzard uh, got reassigned <laughs> and, you know, things are allowed to happen as they should be happening. Um, I'll, take, I'll take either one. Yeah. Uh, what I've been playing, uh, two games. I finished... Once again, the main story of Fable 2. I think I've beat that game nice. like five or six times. Um, but I did something that either I don't remember doing or haven't done before. There's an ending. I'm going to say this because this game is like 15, 25, 38, 70 years old. Yeah, if you haven't played it yet, that's on you. Um, when you get to the end and you're about to kill Lucian, right? Lucian is standing on this platform. The three other heroes and yourself are standing on these other platforms that kind of surround them. You've gone up to him with the music box. You've breaking the whole spell. Um, and he's giving his evil guy speech. Now, he's unprotected. Your hero at, at any time can, like, hit him or shoot him and kill him, right? And in the past, that's what I've done. He'd get done, and he'd be like, you're such a, you'll never be able to, I just do bang, and then he's done. This time, I just wanted to let him talk, right? And when you let him talk, what ends up happening is at a certain point, One of the other heroes, I forgot his name. I think it might be Reaver or something like that. Um, He's like the last one you get. He's the hero of skill because he can shoot with a pistol, super quick, whatever. He shoots and kills him. And he's like, man, I I thought that guy would never shut up. And I'm like, oh, I don't remember that happening before. I kind of feel some type of way that I didn't get to kill the the, the villain. Mm -hmm. But I I guess I should have did something. I should have moved moved quicker. So... I've beat the main story of that. I want to go back into it and play some more side quests and explore a couple of other things before I'm once again, and again, I've played this game five or six times, but I just want to do right. a little bit more with it. Um, 
So that's one game that I beat that I was playing. The other game that I've probably invested the most time into in the interim of these past couple of weeks um, is the game that at one point was the most hyped thing ever. The hype is subsiding a little bit, but it's still very much hype. And that is uh, EA Sports College Football 25. I have to make sure I remember not to say Finally NCAA out. football because they don't call it that anymore. They call it EA Sports College Football 25. Um, yeah, EA made their college football game and they put it out. And People went nuts, and I picked it up the day that it came out. I don't know if I played it the day it came out. I might have played it the day or so afterwards. I got it from my PlayStation 5, but I've been playing that, and I instantly wanted to st- jump in into Dynasty mode, where I can be a coach and do what I want to do, whatever I want to do. Mm-hmm. Um, my coach's name is Al Booty. Okay. Mm-hmm. Um, and and we, we, the reason my coach is named Al Booty is because the competition is ass, right? So this <laughs> this is this is why we, this is how we do this. Uh, so yeah, I signed up to be the offensive coordinator of Kennesaw State, which I think is that I think numerically or stat wise is supposed to be the worst team in the country in this game. Was the offensive coordinator for two years, built it up to be a high flying offense, and now I was hired as the head coach of the Mizzou, Missouri Tigers. So this is where I'm at in my dynasty. I don't know if I will ever produce the white cornerback university that I did with Oregon State mm-hmm. in NCAA football 14, but I have a story that I'm building. So I'm doing the role playing there. That's where I've been investing much of my time. That's pretty much been the only game I'm playing. Um, I think in between all of that, I did tap in a little bit more into Expeditions Rome. And... Uh, I need to play that again before I forget my bearings in that game. I don't mm-hmm. think I will, but um, that game is fun. Like, it's not a thing of like, oh, it's so long, it's lost my interest. It hasn't. I've just been really into playing NCAA football. It's like the old one. It's super easy to get into. It's it's that one more game type of thing that hits you, which is the mark of a game that does something good. So um, but that's mostly what I've been playing. College football 25, very, very little bit of what I finished off with, with fable. So fable two, and I'm actually thinking I'm going to jump into fable three. There's some things on, that's the game I've played the least of the fable series. Mm-hmm. It's the, it's the worst one. That's why saying, it sounds like it's the least favorite of yours too. Yeah, but it's worth jumping into. It's an easy game. Let's go ahead and, and knock it out. Do what it got to do. You know, that's it for what I've been playing though. Nice. I Keep got simple. one question yeah. is the college better than the Madden for the people to know. Ah, yes. So the college is better than the Madden. Um, I think that we all need to take, everyone's been hungry for it. It's been 14 years Mm -hmm. or 11 years, 10 or 11 years. I understand it's been a long time, people. Things can take a long time. Things can turn out really good and also have flaws. It's all okay. Okay. So I would say that, yeah, it's, I think it's very odd, like very easily better than Madden, but it still has issues that are very Madden esque. So, um, but again, I think I talked before about gaming engines. It was built in the Frostbite engine, so it's mm-hmm. going to have some of those Frostbite engine problems, right? Um, we told one of the things we talked about physics. It doesn't. It's animation led. It's not really physics based, um, but it does more. It does better with it than Madden does. So they're they're doing a bunch of hype and stuff for Madden right now. That is dull because people are playing college football. I'm not even sure how well Madden will end up selling this year because college football is out. Right. I think if you're someone that just wants a football game, you probably will just end up playing football college like like college and not Madden. Like I don't I don't even I mean, I guess if you want to do technical NFL, you want to play as Patrick Mahomes or someone, you know, like an idiot, then go ahead and do that. But besides (laughs) that, I mean, if you just want football, college does it better than Madden has been doing. And college was built from the ground up. In the engine, it's not like Madden where they transferred over a bunch of old dead code from previous engines and previous years. And it's just, it doesn't, the loading is taking longer. The icons moving, navigating takes longer. Everything feels like it's slower and takes longer because of it. So. Got it. Yeah. But, um, yeah. And that's, that's, uh, that's it. So I say, um, we move into our topic of the episode. Sure. Um, and I think the we've kind of talked about these before. I want to explore it in an interesting way. Uh, this is our conversation of the games 
our our games of the year. And what I mean by that is not our best games, our favorite games. Mm-hmm. There, we had that, but also maybe games that we didn't enjoy. So I think we have a couple of games we're going to say for each of us that we think are the highlights of our year so far, and then one that maybe we hate or not so much. So it's our various games of the year, not just our best or or, or most favorite games of the year. Um, so I can I can lead the conversation on that first. I want to give mine first. I can do yeah, sure. So um, I've been enjoying the heck out of NCAA college football twenty five. <laughs> that, that that is not my. That is not on this list here. Um, my first one goes to, and I mentioned it briefly, Expeditions Rome. Mm. I am actually surprised at how much I really enjoy this game. Um, thinking about it more, I probably shouldn't be. It deals with the Roman history. I love Roman history. It is a RPG. I love RPGs. It is tactics. I love tactics. It has all of that in it. Um, but it being, I think, published by THQ Nordic, I was a little bit wondering of how is it going to actually be as far as quality. Me not really being as familiar with the franchise, uh, I had to learn some things there. But I'm actually really enthralled with the story, how you navigate different things, your character, how they play into all of it. The aspect of politics and intrigue in addition to the action and the tactics that are in it. Um, it's yeah, it's it's really it's really been a welcome treat for me. And that's why sometimes I have a tendency to, when I really enjoy something, want to take my time with it. And mm-hmm. also that also leads to me not completing things sometimes. And so I don't want Expeditions Rome to fall into the, into the trap of that. I want to complete right. that game, but um, I don't want it to, I don't want it to end too quickly. And so I think that's partially what I'm doing is delaying the inevitable. I did the same thing with Wildermyth. And so I think that I'm kind of doing the same thing with this, but I plan on playing and beating it soon, but that's top of mind. I, I think about that game and I get excited to play it more, you know? So that's my first good. Yeah. yeah. And, and and doing the same thing as you did with Withermyth, you know, I think that's fine. Cause you still put what 60 hours in that game, 30 hours. You put yeah. quite a bit of time into that game. Yeah. It's six, it's 60, maybe 50, between 55 and 60 hours. Yeah. Yeah. So I, I think you'll do fine with it. Mm-hmm. Um, I don't know if you'll count this one. And if you don't, that's fine. But I downloaded a game and played it, I think, right before I left. And I have played it before, but it's been about 20 years, even longer. I re-downloaded Total Annihilation's Kingdom. Oh, uh, okay. 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 And it is exactly the same game as I thought it was. Uh-huh. I am god-awful at it. Mm-hmm. Okay, I played like two games and I just got demolished by the computer and I put it on like an easier setting. Yeah, not the easiest, but you know, I think there's only three. So the middle one, but like I need to relearn how to manage my resources and mm-hmm. what to build and everything like that. And it's it's still just as fun, though. Yeah. So I'm not upset. I spent the five bucks to get it. Nice. Like so, you have the so you have the I guess the 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 Steam version of it then, right? I uh, yeah. it's only on uh, I think it's called Cog. Oh, okay, it's only on GOG. Yeah. Okay. Nice. Nice. You got a DRM free. That's the best one. Um, yeah, man. Those those old school strategy games are relentless when you go against the computer. They do not f around. Yeah. You're out there I, uh, building whatever. Ooh. And they're like, oh, hey, you're seven minutes into this. I'm going to spend uh, I'm going to send a hundred a wave of 100 enemies. and Let's just see how you deal with it. That's yeah. never the, that's never the true attack, by the way. The computer spends waves, sends waves of dozens of enemies. And mm-hmm. you're like, oh, man, you survive it. And you're like, OK, cool. I defended off their 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 first attack. No, that was just a tease of the first attack. The first <laughs> attack is still coming. Uh, I, I remember holding holding up myself pretty well back then mm-hmm. you know for a 10 year old but yeah yeah i got ran over so still there's, fun though i like it there's a, and i think i might have mentioned this game before um there's a game franchise called cossacks which is an rts that's like in the gentleman era when you had musket men and line infantry and different stuff like that and i have cossacks 3 and 
part of the reason I enjoy that game is the mechanics, all the, the RTS stuff of it, but the computer is brutal. And I swear, six, seven minutes into a game, they will send about 50 or 60 riflemen, about 20, 30 dragoons or horsemen, and they're just like, hey, buddy, we're checking to see how you're doing. And <laughs> you're like, hey, I just built my third farm. Can you give me some time? They don't give you anything. Uh, title, Total Annihilation, that's great. I think I've mentioned before that um, they have a game called Planetary Annihilation that uh, kind of falls in the same line as that as far as mechanics, but it's from a planetary point of view. So you build your base up on land, and eventually you can build your base up on a planet and attack another planet with your with your forces, which is a really cool concept. That sounds like a lot. Yeah, yeah. Um, as far as my second, I want to say, top game of the year for me so far, this is, it's hard. This one's, it's, it's actually really difficult. Um, I am going to give the nod. I'm going to give the nod to Mana Lords. Ooh. Um, though Mana Lords does not take it like I anticipated it would. But Mana Lords is a great game. It's a great experience. I eventually want to hop into that as well. Um, we'll hop back into it and build more and do more. Um, but uh, again, there's other things that have just kind of been taking up space. And Expeditions Rome is one of that. I didn't anticipate wanting to finish a 40 plus hour RPG. Um, <laughs> right. So, yeah. So, you know, it, it, that game, again, it's great uh, graphically. It's fantastic strategy. The the city building mechanics and resource management of it is really awesome. Um, and they're constantly adding stuff. They've added more stuff since I played it. I want to hop back into it. That's the great thing about jumping into beta and, um, you know, the preview or whatever you want to call them, open beta games, is that they add con add more and more content. I haven't right. jumped into I haven't jumped into Thronefall for a while. They've added more content. I got into that game at seven dollars or not whatever it was at the time, and they've added even more stuff. So. Uh, I can't wait to jump back into Mandalore's, but I would say that's it. I was super hyped for it, and I would say for the most part, it met my hype for what I wanted. Mm -hmm. Yeah, good. Um, do another uh, little stretch on this one. So, another one I would have to choose would be with Dead by Daylight. Now, I had I jumped in after not playing for two years, so I had a bunch of DLCs I had to wrap up on and. Mm -hmm. play them all and i might be biased but i really did like the uh new resident evil dlc okay the, the wesker killer i like what they've done with them and uh rebecca came with that and so did ada and all around good dlc i like that uh they bring some nice perks can't remember them offhand I know Rebecca has a really good one if you're good at skill checks mm -hmm. and made made the game more refreshing, even though it wasn't just that DLC, but the rest of them I had to play as well. But those ones are the ones I liked the most out of. I think I had to download and catch up on seven DLCs. OK, that was my favorite out of them. Hmm. Okay, cool. That is interesting. I am very, I am, am I, am I, I am somewhat surprised. No, you know what? I rephrase that. I am very surprised that uh, Hellblade 2 was omitted from your list. Well, we, we kind of, we talked about that one a lot, mm -hmm. you know, and I will praise that. I mean, that is in my top five games of all time. Mm -hmm. But I figured. You know, I talk about the same games all the time already. I figured I would mm. give something else some love. I gotcha. I gotcha. Well, that, that makes sense. That perspective makes sense. Um, yeah. yeah. So, so we've we talked about the the two that we either had our favorite or most interesting experience with this year as far as games. Let's talk about maybe one that didn't hit the mark. Um, I at on the, I surprisingly for myself, I can't think of any. I've usually played a game I hate, and I can't think of any that I've hated so far. I have one that I was just like, 
F this game. I'm not playing anymore because it's just kind of dumb. Mm-hmm. Uh, but I don't have anywhere I'm like, I hate it with a passion. Right. Uh, so the one that, and it's it's interesting, weird, I don't know. But the one that I was kind of like, what is this? Is I tried this game called Descenders. I'm not sure if you've heard of it. I don't think so. It is essentially a bike racing game. Like dirt bike racing. And, you know, I'm someone where, look, I, I played Ride. I enjoyed Ride. I recently went back, went to, uh, what is it called? Uh, Disc Replay. And I bought a 360 copy of Pure. I don't know if you oh. remember Pure. I freaking no. love that game. That's like okay. an ATV racing game from the 360 era. Uh, absolutely loved it. So I'm not adverse to that. I've talked before about how I play racing games. Mm-hmm. Uh, it's like a sneaky favorite thing of mine. So whether it's race, like like car racing or anything like that, it's cool. I wanted to try Descenders because it seemed cool. It's like a bike racing game where you're trying to race, I believe, down from a mountain or something like that. Um it's very it's physics based, so you think, oh, okay, that's cool, cool ragdoll and different stuff like that. It's just dumb, like it's just the way you like <laughs> manipulate your person. Uh, that's funny. Dumb, the way things race, how how the graph, how the physics work, and all that. It's just dumb and aggravating. It is like, hey, learn how to do a bunny hop. Now learn how to do a bunny hop and flip forward. You know what I'm saying? It's like, well, for what? Like, I mean, you get little scores and all that stuff, but it's also about winning the race. Yeah, so, like, it doesn't seem it's. Do, do, I, do I prioritize the tricks or do I prioritize winning the race? Like, what do I do? You know what I'm saying? Like, wh- which one am I supposed to do? Well, you do a mix of both. Okay, but that's stupid. If I'm jumping yeah. into a game for the first time, I'm an idiot jumping into a world for the first time. What should I prioritize? If I want to build, make progress and, and have and have fun, right? Um, so it doesn't make any sense. There were other people in the game. There's other people, but of course it's on Game Pass. It's kind of like a free to play, or maybe not free to play if it's on Game Pass. But I remember there being other people in the game. There's like a little lobby area where you can try tricks. I'm up here falling over picnic benches and different stuff like this. I was like, get out of here. Like, I don't, I don't want to do with this. I'm out of here. This is dumb. I'm seeing other people. They're also falling right. and doing stupid stuff. I'm out of here. This is stupid. I'm not gonna. I'm not gonna spend my time doing this. So uh, yeah, that was the game that turned me off. I'm pretty sure by the end of this year, I will have played a game that pissed me off really, and that I'd be mad about. But besides that, this one was just annoying. So I was like, you know what? I'm piecing out. I'm annoyed. I'm done. I feel you on that one. Um, mine, we also have to go back to Dead by Daylight. Uh, the DLC for the Dungeons and Dragons. Okay. It just did not go very well. Um, the map that came out with it, uh, there's some windows that, you know, you jump through to run away from the killer and stuff. Like, it wouldn't work. You would do the animation, you would do the climbing and go like through the window, but it wouldn't actually put you through. You'd still be stuck outside of the window. So the killer's just gonna hit you. <laughs> and you're kind of stuck because there's stuff around the window. And then in one section, there's a pallet, and pallets, you know, you knock them down so you can get away from the killer. But when you knock this particular pallet down, there's just a space right next to it where you can just walk through so you're not slowing down the killer at all so that was useless and then i didn't have this problem but there's quite a few people that was like getting stuck in the level and stuff like Mm. that and it just i don't think they tested that one enough or something it just it didn't go very well and the killer itself was just annoying to play against Mm. so that that would have to be mine. I just not a fan of that DLC. And was that DLC that that existed? Because they all when you went back to that game, they all kind of loaded up, right? I'm yeah, that was actually the newest one. That's when newest I was one. playing. Yeah. Okay. Okay. But that one came out before the Resident Evil one. It came out. It came out after. Okay. Gotcha. Okay. Okay. So you literally experienced your your best and worst. Within the the lifespan of the same game, right? Like <laughs> as far as yeah, as far as gaming, yeah. That's interesting. Yeah, I thought it was pretty funny. Yeah. Um, <clears throat> let's see. As far as like games or or like gaming moments that were terrible for me, I think that's pretty much it. it was just that Descenders one for me. Did you have any other ones? Um, I don't. I don't think so. Um, I haven't tried too many games. Mm-hmm. 
I guess just to say something, uh, I've been playing a lot of words with friends with okay. my partner and it, it is a fun game, but sometimes it just gives you like all vowels. What am I supposed to do with that? Yeah. So it's just, it's like frustrating and you have to like waste a turn to put all seven tiles back in the bag just to get four more vowels. Like, yeah. What is this madness? Yeah. Yeah. I get you there. I'm thinking about, um, not that it's like a bad thing or whatever, but there was a moment, maybe a couple of nights ago, I was playing uh, college football 25 and I had a game I was playing against the computer or whatever. And I was, I'm playing it late. It's super late at night. It's maybe like two in the morning oh. and I'm playing, and I'm playing this game. Right. And the computer is doing their BS. The computer's computering. Right. And they're screwing me over and then they're getting their points and yada, 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 it's back and forth. And so I am, I am so livid that I am cursing under my breath to myself <laughs> at two in the morning oh, that's and my funny. partner hears me. And so she asks me, is everything okay? And I say, what? Like, what are you talking about? And she's like, well, I'm hearing you whispering to yourself. So I'm just <laughs> checking to see if everything's okay. And I'm like, yeah, I'm straight. It'll be straight. Cause I'm just so into it and just so annoyed. Yeah. Um, that's funny. Yeah, it'll it'll games will make you a maniac. Oh, for like, sure, especially when things aren't going your way and you're just like so confused, like why? It's like I'll have a a bad game of Overwatch and you're just getting stomped so hard, and even when you step back and try something different, doesn't work, and I'm just like, f this, f that, your teammates, what are you doing? Yeah, yeah, it's it's no bueno. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. There's been, yeah. I, I do the spiteful, um, especially with football games like that, the spiteful score or touchdown on the last second of a game just to be spiteful because they, at one point, they had a, they had a run that went for 12 yards, and I felt like it shouldn't have went for 12 yards. So now I'm pissed that they ran a 12-yard run. I'm like, oh, yeah, <laughs> we'll take this. You know what I'm saying? Right? It's so ridiculous. Yep. Oh, man. Well. With those games out the way, I guess that leads us to uh, final thoughts. Ooh, we can make okay. a final offer a final thought about anything that is either related or unrelated to the podcast episode. So, who's giving a final thought first? I'll go first. All righty. All right. So, while I was in Vietnam, my brother's wife's nephew, he also plays TFT. We're like, cool. So, we added each other. Trying to invite each other just was not working. We were very confused, especially when there's a language barrier. Mm -hmm. Even more confused. Yeah. So we find out TFT is region locked. So mm. we just straight up just can't play with each other. So that was very annoying. And he ended up buying a North American account so we could play together. But that just seems like so much to work around. Like, yeah. I I looked up region locking and why it's a thing now, and it seems to do mostly with uh, pricing manipulation. You know, like, the game that's 60 bucks here would be 40 bucks in a different country, and people were just switching their country and buying the cheaper one and then switching back, and so the companies were losing money. Oh, no. So now you can't purchase a different country uh, version of a game you can only by the one that your client is in so mm. but yeah but we played a game or two it was fun he beat me he's higher levels than me like i i'm lucky if i get the gold in there and he's platinum so oh, yeah. yeah but uh it was that was fun but yeah region locking i i understand it but i don't get it yeah yeah region stuff is weird i remember um Recently, where for my partner's my partner's uh, brother's boy, I mean, my partner's brother's birthday as a gift, um, got him the game of the year edition of Bloodborne because he hadn't played it before. Okay. But it was the I don't know, like the like the EU version. So I guess fortunately that was able that's able to play on the PlayStation Four that you can actually play it. 
on there. So I can have a U.S. region PlayStation 4 that mm-hmm. can play a European uh, region Bloodborne. But um, if it was like some other region, like if it was Asia, like Japan or something, there were like other certain changes or or things I would have had right. to do in the settings in order to make it work. So like all of that is like really interesting as far as how that goes. And obviously like it has to be a money business policies, law type things. There's different, ex- different, you know, maturity ratings and different things like that. I'm assuming that like all goes into what's helping with all that stuff or mm-hmm. what kind of Probably. influences all of it. So it's weird. It's all, it's all crazy in that game, especially when you just want to sit there with someone else and play a very simple game. They're like, exactly. hey, let's just hop on and play a game real quick. Since we both play the same game, that's cool. It's a way for us to connect. And they're like, not so fast. You two live in different invisible line places. <laughs> so we're, we're going to have to get this yeah. figured out. Yeah. Annoying. Um, My final thought, not so much region locking as it is function locking. Mentioned college football 25. Uh, it has a team builder element. Uh, people are aware you can build custom teams, custom logos, and different stuff like that. A lot of people will build um, teams that are college teams that aren't included in the game. So, for instance, I don't know, for, I don't know, as an example, maybe you go to Fair State and you want Fair State football team to be in college football 25. You can do team builder. You can build it up, name the stadium, do the colors, import the logo. All that stuff is really cool. I want to do that for my alma mater, Wayne State. Wayne State is not in the default roster of teams for college football 25. Um, And there is in team builder a portal for you to use it. I wanted to do a dynasty mode with it. I could not unless I decided to do an online dynasty mode. That means that I need to be able to use the online multiplayer functionality of it. That is stupid. I got it from my PlayStation 5. I don't pay for PlayStation Plus because I'm not a I'm not a mook. I'm not a sucker. <laughs> so so I don't have it. That therefore means I can't use it. Right. Why can't I? But I downloaded it. I downloaded the file of the team builder. Mm-hmm. Why can't I use it in an offline dynasty mode? That doesn't right. make any sense. Like I should be able to just fire up and use it. it doesn't make any sense at all of why I can't do that. Right. Is it a function thing that comes later? Why is it coming later? That's one of the main things of why people <laughs> like your game. That seems like it would be a day one thing. Um, right. it's, like, it's, 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 it's crazy. I could understand, like, if you needed to be connected to the internet, because, you know, you're making your stuff and downloading whatever right. and changing things. Understandable. Right. But to be online to do it is just a whole nother level of ridiculousness. Right, especially when you can sort of like some games that are free to play multiplayer um, are actually you you can actually play them without a PlayStation Plus membership or without an Xbox Live Gold whatever membership. They made that allowance. But if I want to be able to play a team in my game, I have to have that functionality. That just doesn't make sense. Also, right. not in that game. Um, is this a little rant with it? Also, not in that game. Mass subs, which means I can't do massive substitutions. So I can't sub in my second, my second offensive, if offensive unit or defensive unit for my first offensive unit or first defensive unit, which means that my players get injured. Right? They've introduced David. They introduced this mechanic called a wear and tear system, which is really cool. As your player plays and they take hits, they progressively wear down and they have damage that happens maybe on their forearm, on their knee, and it affects their ability to be as fast or whatever. It's a really cool, interesting mechanic. That is right? awesome. Cool. It's cool. It's so cool that a mechanic that used to be in the game that would go along great with it is mass subs. See, <laughs> if I could use a mass sub, I could massively sub out my 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 first Offense running back and wide receivers who are getting worn down and bring in fresh new people to take right. over. It seems like they would go hand in hand. But EA said, mm, not yet. That's not available yet. That's maybe a function that's happening later. It's the wildest thing I've ever I've ever seen. Yeah, that and doesn't make, make any sense why that's, that's missing. Besides now, that, though, pretty fun game. <laughs> I have a question. How yeah. come I, the answer is probably obvious. But how come every college football is team isn't in the game? Just because there's too many? That's what I think the reason is. Probably too many. And also, you, you know, you have like Division One, Division Two, II, Division Three, And I think their focus is Division One teams, right? So 
your big Division One teams. I think Wayne State's maybe a, di- a Division Two or three, so they wouldn't be in there anyway. Got it. Um, those those schools are 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 represented by generic teams, like an FCS, like a, a, a team may be called the FCS West Barracudas. That's supposed to represent some random Division Two team, right? So if you do the team builder, you can kind of role play your team being a Division One big program or small program that's trying to make a way in the big bad football world. Um, so I'm assuming that Got there's it. also, and then there's also licensing things where it's like, hey, we don't want our, we're not getting compensated, but we think we should be getting compensated. And you're like, um, why do you, you're George Mason. No one cares who you are anyway. Why do you, what are you talking about? Like you should be lucky to be in the game. And you know, it's, it's, <laughs> it's, 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 it's different stuff like that, but. Yeah. Right. Okay. Uh, that makes sense. Yeah. I think that's mostly what's going on there. Um, yeah, that's it for my uh, final thought. This leads us to the end of level 111 or 111. 111. Of the Thoughts and Players podcast. If you like what you heard, if you want to support, there's various ways you can do so. For one, you can follow and listen to the pod on your preferred podcast service. You can check us out, Apple, Overcast, um, whatever Google's doing, Spotify, we're all over there. Um YouTube music, different stuff like that. You can also find us and support us on the socials. We are on Facebook. Uh, we are on Instagram. We are on TikTok, Twitter. And, of course, we upload video versions of the podcast every week on YouTube. If you want to support us, a little bit of cha-ching. There's a couple of ways you can do that. One way, merch. I don't think I have any merch in like at hand right now. But, um... Merch is one way. Yeah, we got, you know, cell phone cases, shirts, hats, hoodies, different stuff you can get there at our uh, Teespring store. Links will always be in the post for that. Um, and then also we have a Patreon. If you want to support us, you have three tiers, a two, five, and seven dollar tier. You can support us there where you can get access to custom content, exp- exclusive content, uh, like different certain Let's Plays, different videos, stuff like that. Um, yeah, that is it for me. David, was there anything else you wanted to add? Peace. Alrighty. Well, thanks for tuning in, and we will catch you on the next level. <laughs>